3D printers, laser engravers, CNC mills, electronic controlled lathe machines, plasma metal cutters, high pressure water cutters, grinders and routers, all these machines have something in common. These are all computerized numerical control machines, or CNC. But what is actually a CNC machine? What is the working principle of these devices, how they evolved, and why are these the best solution in so many manufacturing scenarios? We use CNC machines in so many applications. Even myself have a few CNC machines in my own workshop. So guys, let's see all these types of CNC machines with practical examples. Understand the theory behind the working principle of each machine, the mechanical part and the most important, the electronic part of a CNC. We'll talk about G-code, the axis of a CNC, the drivers, the power supplies, control and encoders and the actuators. Make sure that you subscribe and activate the notification bell. Consider supporting my work on Patreon. So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. So here I have a CNC milling machine. I will use this and other examples to explain the parts of a basic CNC. I've used this milling machine in other projects, where I even engraved a PCB. And by the way, talking about PCBs, before we continue with the video, give me a few seconds to tell you about the services of the sponsor of this video, GLC PCB. If you have a design of a PCB, have in mind that GLC PCB could manufacture PCBs up to 6 layers and a size of 400 by 500 mm. You can select any color that you want for the solder mask and for 5 PCBs of 100 by 100 mm, you will pay only $2 plus shipping. That is a very low price. The ordering process is very easy. Get the Gerbers of your design in a zip file, upload that to glcpcb.com, Select the settings such as thickness, the color and so on and make the order for amazing prices. Ok, so let's continue. In this video we'll talk about the main types of CNC machines, how G-code works more or less and the parts of any CNC. But first, CNC stands for Computerized Numerical Control. So as its name implies, we have three elements. We need to control a machine using numbers and a computer. So this will go like this, we have a machine, any kind of machine, one like this one, a drilling one, that could go up and down. So I do that with my hand so this is not a CNC. But what if instead of using my hand I add a motor to control this machine, and this motor movement is controlled by an Arduino for example. Well in this case we now have a CC machine, or computerized controlled machine, because the Arduino or the computer is controlling the movement. But now I add a USB connection to my Arduino as well, and I send number values with the height of the drill and the Arduino will move the motor in such a way that it will follow the height values that I send. So now we have a numerical control as well. So now this is a CNC machine of one axis because this can only go up and down. So now we have the basic. Any machine that is controlled by a computer with numbers coordinates is a CNC machine. This could have different amount of axes, but the most basic ones are two, 3 and 5 axis machines. Two main types of CNC are additive or subtractive machines. For example, with 3D printers which are additive, we start with nothing and keep adding material till the object is finished. But on the other side with a CNC mill for example, which is subtractive, we start with a full block and we keep removing material till the object is finished. This could have all sort of tools and work with a huge variety of materials such as wood, plastic and different sorts of metals. We use CNC machines because they are very very precise compared with manual control. By hand you would never be able to move the axis exactly 0. something millimeters or less. But using step motors for example, we know for sure that each step will move the axis a certain amount of millimeters and if we use gears or pulleys we can increase the resolution a lot, down to thousands of an inch or so called tau and some machines could even have a resolution of 0.001 mm, which is very precise. As I said before we have machines of 1, 2, 3 or 5 axes. For 1 axis movement we could have just an automized drilling press. For 2 axes the machine could move in the x and y direction, and we could have for example a laser cutter. This is a 2 axis machine because the laser is fixed in place. We can only control the power of the laser, but not the height. In the same way we could also have a plasma cutter, 
that uses pressured air and high voltage plasma to cut metals. This is a very useful tool, especially for cutting very thick metals and that for low cost. You could get a plasma cutter for around $200. You can place that over a CNC machine body and you could have a CNC plasma cutter for less than $1000. I'm following a YouTube channel that I also recommend that is called Making Stuff. He's made a very nice plasma cutter, so if you are interested just watch his video about this topic. Another tool that we could have is a water jet cutter. This machine could move again in 2 or 3 axes and it uses very high pressure water to cut any kind of material. It's quite amazing to see how just simple water could cut very thick metals, ceramic, plastic and pretty much anything. I even saw a clip where they were cutting an entire bowling ball with water jet. But sometimes this water jet is a mixture of water and also sand, in order to increase friction and cut better. This is also a very powerful CNC machine. Now using drills we can remove material by spinning that drill bit against a fixed surface. But in the opposite way, using a lead machine we can also do that. But in this case the material block is the one that spins and we use a fixed tool such as a cutter or drill bit to remove the material. Using this lead machine we are a little bit limited, because we can perform movement in many directions. But for holes, for tubes, round shapes and so on, the lead machine is a very useful tool. One main functionality of the lead machine is also to create threads. At a constant speed and a constant movement, we can create any kind of thread of different pitch and gap space. Then for the 3 axis CNC we have the milling machines. This work in the same way as the 2-axis one, but in this case we can also lift or lower the tool instead of just cutting 2D parts, and we can create 3D shapes. We can mill PCBs, aluminum blocks and create unique shapes, or to mill plastic or wood. Using these machines we are able to create components that are very difficult to make by hand and also require precision. By using different materials we also have to change the settings of the milling machines. We can adjust that for each material, by for example setting a different RPM of the drill. Increase or decrease the speed of rotation of the drill according to the process or the material that you use. If you just want to engrave something, maybe fully cut the material or maybe you change from wood to metal, you have to adjust the speed. At the same time you have to change the tool, because you can't use the same tool for plastic or for aluminum for example. Or sometimes you need to make different size holes or cuts and you need to go from a big tool to a smaller one. Sometimes we change the tool by hand. But high tech machines have a library of tools on the side and they are programmed to automatically change their tool and keep going with the same process. That will save us a lot of time and it's more comfortable for us, because you can just program the machine and let it do the job. For 3 axis CNC we also have the 3D printers which as you might know, nowadays, we have all sorts of models. From personal use of small printers to industrial ones, capable of printing huge parts. Even NASA is studying 3D printers for entire buildings, or for making furniture out of recycled materials. 3D printing changed the manufacture process a lot. So we have three main types of 3D printers. One is the FDM, or Fused Deposition Modeling, which is the typical 3D printer you will see in all of my projects. This will melt the plastic filament, and then it will deposit the material layer by layer, till the entire object is ready. But then we have the SLA or DLP printers, which are close enough. Both printers are using light to solidify a liquid resin. You create the mask for each layer, and solidifying each part, we can create the final object. Now a newer and more expensive type of 3D printing is the selective laser melting, or SLM and in this one we use a high power laser to melt powder material that could be plastic or even metal. Lately I can see more and more posts about 3D metal printing which is another step forward for the future. Ok, so finally, for the 5 axis machines, these are basically 3 axis machines that could move in the x, y and z directions, but they can also rotate in 2 of these axes. With this we can get even more complicated shapes where we have to mill the inside of the object or from below, and with a normal 3 axis machine that would be impossible. Ok now let's talk about how CNC works. First, what components a CNC machine needs. We have the machine mechanical body or the frame, we have the actuators, the drivers, the control unit and the numerical data. The mechanical body is well the entire frame 
the rods and the screws, the moving axis with the bearings, the belts, the gears and so on. Basically everything that makes the axis of the machine. Then the actuators are the components that will move each axis. Usually these are electric motors. The most common ones that we use with CNC machines are the stepper motors. We use this because they can work in an open loop system. And that basically means that we send the number of steps that we want to make and the motor will do it and that's it. We don't need a feedback or anything else. An open loop CNC machine is very easy to control but it has a big downside. If the axis of the machine encounters an external force and it can reach the desired position, the machine without a feedback will never be able to detect that error. So another solution is to use DC brushed motors or DC brushless motors. You might remember this solution from an old prototype of mine that I tried with this method. So we use normal brushed DC motors because these are a lot cheaper. But now we need a feedback in order to know the real position of the axis. So for that we use so-called encoders and this could be rotational encoders or linear encoders. At the same time, the rotational encoders could be magnetic using some hole sensors, could be optic using some infrared LEDs and a phototransistor or maybe mechanical using pad connectors. By counting the rotation of the shaft, we can know for sure the real position of the axis and this method could easily detect if the axis reached the desired position or not because now we have a feedback. Ok, now the drivers. These are electrical components designed to control the actuators. In case of the stepper motors, we need a step motor driver. In my projects I use the A4988 and this is a very useful driver. But for bigger motors or better results, you might need a more expensive driver with a more complicated circuit. The main task of the driver is to apply the pulses to the stepper motor in order to make steps in one or the other direction. But in case of the DC motors we use an ESC or electronic speed controller to control the speed and direction of brushless motors. And we use a power controller with an H bridge to control the speed and direction of normal brush DC motors. Now to control these drivers we need the main unit, the microcontroller, the processor, the computer of the system. Usually that is a simple microcontroller. In case of these personal 3D printers, almost always is an STM32 or in other cases an Admega chip, which is the same chip the Arduino is using. But for more complicated machines, we might need directly a computer with a good operating system capable of running more complicated tasks. The task of the control unit is to receive the numerical data with the coordinates and decide the amount of steps, the power and all is needed to be sent to the drivers in order to control the actuators or the motors in such a way that the desired position is reached at the desired speed, feed rate and so on. Ok, and finally we have the numerical data. CNC machines are usually controlled by a type of data that is called G-code. These are basically the numerical instruction with the coordinates for each axis. So here we have an example of a basic G-code line. As you can see, we get the information to move to the position 30 mm in the X direction, 25 in the Y and 1 mm in the Z direction. More complicated G-code could have already pre-made commands for homing the machine, setting the fit rate of the spindle or the printed material, creating ellipses and so on. These are some basic G-code commands. G0 is for rapid movement. G1 is for control movement. We have clockwise or counterclockwise motion. We can change from inches to millimeters, home the machine, set the feed rate, the speed, the tool select and so on. So the control unit will get line by line the G-code. We can do that using maybe a USB connection or directly from the internal memory of an SD card. Or maybe the G-code is directly on the operating system of the machine. First it splits the line into X, Y and Z coordinates or the special G-code commands. Let's say that you want to draw a circle, which by the way for CNC machines, the perfect circle can't exist. The idea of a circle is that the perimeter is an infinite line of points equally far from the center. But in G-code the points are finite. Is this a circle? No, right? So let's add another vertex. So is this a circle? No, this is a square. But let's keep adding points and as you can see we are getting closer and closer to a circle. But this will never have infinite points. If we make a zoom we can see the distance between each vertex. 
Anyway, the machine will get the coordinates of the first point and controls the drivers that control the motors that will move the axis. When we get to the first point, we read the next G-code line, and so on till the entire shape is finished. In order to get the G-code file, we need a special slicer software. But first we need the design, which could be just a 1D line, a 2D draw or a 3D object. We take this 3D object and using different parameters for the layer height, the material that we use, the temperature, the tool that we need and so on, we insert these parameters into the slicer software and this will create a G-code for us. So here we have an example of the G-code of a 3D object, that will be 3D printed. As you can see, we have the object layer by layer, instruction by instruction. Now here we have another example of a G-code, and this is for a 2D engraving process for a PCB. I've used this software to make my own Arduino PCB. In this case we have the information about the drill bit diameter, the fit rate of the spindle and the movement speed of the engraving. So guys, CNC machines will come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. We use CNC machine parts pretty much every day, without noticing. We use them in car manufacturing process, tools developing, prototyping, factories and commercial use, small workshops and even in our own homes, as 3D printers or small engravers. I hope that you now have a more diverse idea about CNC machines. What types we have, what are their main components and how they work. If you want me to make a full video about the optic encoded prototype of the CNC machine that uses brush DC motors, well, comment below. I hope that you like this video, so give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Also activate the notification bell. Consider supporting my work on Patreon. Thanks again and see you later guys.